until the afternoon. It's like 12.30. Remote A on a Sunday. This is first cut, so it's pretty thick. We're just getting started, so we haven't like done anything like chopped any yet, but we're just mowing it all today, and I'm sure it'll be tomorrow when we chop it, as long as it doesn't rain. And the skies, as you can see, look a little dark. I'm in the new mower, and Landon is in the older mower. Last year, we combined, we had weed on these fields, on these strips all the way up. As you can see, the, you can see like the lines, they're all strips and it was wheat and hay, and now um, they all are hay. So now we have this humongous field of hay to cut, which is really exciting because I like bigger fields better than the strips. So I got this Bluetooth transmitter, and holy to moly, light changer. It literally like makes your any kind of radio Bluetooth, and I got it off of Amazon, $20. It's also Mike McGee's birthday. He's our mechanic, and it's his birthday today. I don't know how old he is, but I just texted him. Yeah, so that about sums it up for today, and let's mow some hay. you guys per se um last night it started to rain so that was that um i got picked up and called it quits i filled up my hay line and then we're starting again today so putting my boots on right now i need to get new boots i think but <laughs> it is memorial day so today is a day to remember those who have served and sacrificed and I think that I mean I've been working every Memorial Day for as long as I can remember and every time I'm working I feel even more grateful and thankful that I have the freedom to be able to provide 
and all of that good stuff. So now I'm going to the farm to grease my hay vine and get her rolling. We're a little hesitant to start this. I forgot my drinks. A little hesitant to start this morning um, because there's rain in the forecast for the next few days and everything that we got last night got rained on. So it's like 200 acres that are down that are wet now. Um, no, there. I have a muscle milk making it read. And so, yeah, this little field right here is down of hay. It's all down. And we're also going to be doing a podcast today at some point. So, maybe I'll throw the highlights in here or something. I don't know. Please grease things so that we can grease it. There's a ton on here. Ooh, ooh. Body of this old guy was here. This old guy was here, you know? Yeah. He was a neighbor. And he was, we were talking about cutting hay and corn and everything else. And it got really quiet. And all of a sudden, he just went, like, <laughs> And we just looked at each other. No, I didn't look at him, but me and my, me and Andrew looked at each other, and we're like, <laughs> like "Sounds like frogs." Oh my and god! I think the guy got embarrassed and he left. Really? Oh. But I wasn't picking up. Sad. We're up. Hey, 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 people! Welcome back. I'm so hyper. I've been up since four in the morning. Actually, three thirty, because I had to get there at four, and I live a half hour away. And I've been out at the barn, and now I'm ready to record this podcast. Claudia is actually, uh, we're literally... This, this is, is the most <laughs> informal podcast uh, we've probably ever done. No, Claudia has sure, just but... jumped out of the hay vine. She's been doing that. And I was like, come on, we're going to come record a co podcast in our truck. Quick, could we have planned ahead and done it before? Um, yes, but Not when's really. the last time we've done that? It's... No, we don't plan ahead. No. I mean, sometimes. It really depends if it's like a big event. This is a big event, but um, I think they oh might yeah. do some balance. I was talking to Mouse. Whenever you guys chop it in the first cutting and then you feed it to the cows, their milk drops like cray cray. I don't know why. You guys, if you're a dairy nutritionist, you should DM me and tell me why that happens. <laughs> we went to a really, really cool place on Saturday a couple days ago, and I think we should talk about it. We went to a place in Hubbardsville, New York, and it was so pretty. What was it called? Uh, we went to Endless Trails Farm. What's it was called? I thought it was called Happy Trails. It is called Endless Trails because it's endless. <laughs> I was this morning, I was telling Mousy about it, and like, oh, she was like, what's it called? I'm like, Happy Trails? <laughs> is that... But that's like what... No. Yeah, I know. Isn't there another meaning for Happy Trails? Yeah. <laughs> like when people have like the hair on their stomach. Yes. That's, That's what, <laughs> what do you think the coolest part about it was? I just, I love how different, like, that you can, like, set up a bee farm, you know? Whether mm -hmm. it's a feedlot or whether you're just grazing or feeding on bales or whatever. Like, we are just not used to, like, the whole rotating and moving cows through fences and everything. Like, I think that's just always so cool. Yeah, they're really, like, very strict about the rotational grazing because... She likes to graze her cows all the way out until like the first snow pretty much. On this specific operation, not every beef operation, but I feel like it's a lot more common with beef mm -hmm. is that the calf stays with their mom. Do mom. you have any thoughts about that? Um, yes, I think that this is where a lot of the slander stems from. Like people see pictures of cows with cows and calves together and then they're like oh but why are you taking them away but it's totally two different worlds like it's not you cannot compare dairy cows and beef cows but I think that's where it comes from is people see like a baby drinking from the mom in a picture and they're like why does dairy take it away from them but I think that's where maybe a lot of it comes from I feel like dairy cows are like the private school kids oh God, and so true. the beef cows are like the public, public. school kids <laughs> we went to a public school by, by the way guys yeah no hate because uh, my that's, that's so true because dairy cows they're just like little princesses they need like they're just like oh we can't do anything on our own <laughs> You guys yeah. are like, I'm a different school. Anyway, that's where we went, and then we're. I'm talking about the differences. I am. Oh, yes. I was gonna come up with another one too. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. I, I want to hear what your one is. See if it's on my list. <laughs> you have one. I was gonna come up with that on the fly. Oh. How are dairy cows different than beef cows, Claudia? Um. Oh. Like um, school. 
<laughs> um, I think that I it was very interesting to see how like a beef cow like they had their oldest one was like fourteen. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, and dairy cows they usually we send them when they're around ten years old. Well, oh. this is such a soldier. Oh. I want a horse. I'm sorry, we're like watching this horse get <laughs> so majestic. What did you say about me? Oh, I don't know the beef thing. Oh, yeah, the beef thing. More differences in beef farming that we noticed. Um, beef farmers are a ton more, ton more, hands off. Dairy farmers, we are in the pen three times a day, four times, five times a day, constantly handing, mm. handling these cows. They're used to having their temperature taken. We All we have to do is put them in a headlock and do whatever we want. And we are handling them all the time. Obviously, we're milking them three times a day. And when they have a calf, we're assisting them if we need to. So it's tons of hands-on action on a dairy farm. But when it came to beef farming, we asked Chrissy and she said she only handles them three to four times per year. Can you imagine that? What if I just didn't touch those cows up there? I don't even know, they would go rogue. They would probably be rabid. Yeah. <laughs> You'd come up there and be like, I'm a <laughs> And yeah. It's so like walking that was like... the big, oh my God. We come in there and they're like, excuse me. I don't want to like put beef farmers under the bus because I know it's a hard job, but it's just like it's so hard. It is. We have it way harder. They gotta like do fence and we have to do gates. It's not they break all the time. Free stalls break all the time. I don't know. I just think that there's just a lot more to do with dairy cows. Okay. Do you agree with that? I think there's more money in beef. Yeah, I agree. So with who's that. the real winner here? I agree. I'm just saying. I kind of wish we had a beef farm instead. Pause for an intermission. We're both wearing our merch right now. And um, they're on our website. Mm, mm, mm. Eat beef. This is one of my favorites. I have never like been a gray kind of person, I like but I one. love the gray. Love that. Um, but yeah, not that there are beef farmers under the bus. I wish we were a beef farm just because it seems a little bit easier. You're a hypocrite. I'm. S it's so easy being okay, a beef farm. Like you guys shirt. are just so lucky. I'm You're kidding. such a hypocrite. I know it's hard work, and I'm just saying the handling part We're is way easier. For this. I don't Oedipus care because it's just facts. It's there's a lot less handling. Okay, but that doesn't that mean makes it's harder. It it's less harder. Okay, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just kind of jealous of beef farmers. In a way. I know. Okay, you know what? Yes. I'm right. You have literally so much more. We have a nutrition. Okay. We have a vet. We have all right. the DHI people. They have they to come have test grazing, the milk. like grass people. Oh, look wow. Their grass. That's their one person? <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. I love beef farmers. I think it's awesome. I, all farmers, like, with no hate. Like, I hate when farmers go against each other. I'm just saying the dairy farming seems a lot more involved and a lot more steps. You're going to get canceled. I'm not getting canceled. <laughs> I literally love beef I'm farming. I'm canceling I you. I wish I was a beef farmer. Because okay, then just, say that first next time. I did, and I said I wish I was a beef farmer because there's a lot less <laughs> So you want me to, like, Photoshop that And back. then if you really disagree with me, please DM me and tell me why not so I can understand. <laughs> I'm going to be canceled like Trisha, but I can't be canceled. Do you want to talk about how easy, like, egg farming is, too? I feel like that's way more, like, they have to Okay, well, we'll too. get into another episode about so that. Say, like, Cause I got something else to talk so about. Dumb. Okay, so I want to talk about... May was um, beef oh, yeah. month and June is dairy month and we're starting the milk flip cup challenge this month in June. Well, this is weird. Yeah. yeah, so that who I want. Who's playing first? I need to figure that out. Oh my god, guess who you're playing first? Who? Millennial Farmer. Yeah. <laughs> you better win. Okay, so I'm playing Zach Johnson first. Um, so everybody better stay tuned because um, I'm going to win, obviously. I'm like, that's an easy dub. Um, <laughs> I cannot believe you're playing Zach first. Did I play I'm gonna Zach go first talk some yeah, crap on the story. You did? That was my last, my first flip cup challenge was against Zach, and I won. I'm gonna go talk. You some better crap. practice. If you lose against him, I've been practicing again. for a long time. I'm ready. Um, you seriously need They sent wristbands, so headbands, and socks so in the mail. I know, and the funny one. I'm getting a little nervous now. Watch it's on, It's all through Instagram, and you watch that through Instagram Live. So if you just go on our page, the time will be announced, and then we'll, let's start the live, and then we play against each other, and then I'm going to win, and so I advance the next round. Um, are you scared? I'm scared being nervous. Wait, when are you playing? I guess I should oh figure out what day. Like two minutes from now, today. Oh my God. So it's a whole thing about charity and donating um, and the Milk Club Cup Challenge is just like kind of like the center of it all. So that's how we, we donate to 
um, Feeding America. So and there's shirts too. There's shirts, and you can like do donate that way and buy and support. So that yeah, is. So Claudia's playing next weekend. You and Zach have to pick a time on either Saturday or Sunday. Hmm. Next weekend. But yeah, I'm so excited for you, and you're totally gonna have to bring it home for us. Bring, bring, home home the, the bring home the cup. I will be. And now we're gonna talk about a little bit of something that was a little more touchy on the internet right now, and we wanted to kind of get rid of some allegations. Yeah, so as you guys might have noticed, the Fair Oaks video of animal abuse is going around again. The reason why that's going around again is actually a two year old video. It happened in 2019, and it happened two years ago, and it was handled. The employees were fired, clearly. They're actually in the process of getting fired that day. And the video's going around because groups like animal rights activists and vegans, it's June Dairy Month. So they are looking to fire back and try to destroy dairy kind farmers. Kind of combat like yeah. what we're trying to do to promote it. And yes. then they want to be like, no, 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 no. Shut and they up. knew that would work. So they paid a lot of money to get that video and to Straight spread it again. around. Yeah, so you're gonna see that video all over the place. Please don't interact with it. Don't watch it because that will just increase their views and make it even more viral. Don't share it. Don't. Yeah. Don't share it and be like, oh, this video is so dumb, dairy farm. No, like, don't share it. Don't ha even share your thoughts on it. Don't comment on it. Completely ignore the video. Because if you are doing anything to interact with that video, you're part of the problem. You're going to make it go viral. You're going to keep it going. So I shared something on Facebook the other day. And I'm going to read well, part of it. Can I you also want to ask, I every time I read an article about it, I see that it was literally PETA people staging the whole thing. It was not real employees of Fair Oaks. So that's why I wanted, I don't, I guess I could read more on it, but I don't, and I don't know if they ever even knew. Did you read this? Yes. Okay. I've read everything on it and I just, so is that not true? Well, that's definitely a conspiracy that I mean, that would make sense. That'd be, it's Isn't that clearly, crazy, though? They have funds going for this, so they're making a lot of money off this video. I know, but isn't it crazy that PETA animal rights activists would abuse animals to get footage? That's just how they did, and they they euthanize animals all the time, and they're just not a good organization to support. They're just nuts. They just want to, like, huh. That makes me so mad. So here's some facts about the video that I'm going to credit Mary Elizabeth Foote. She shared it on her page, and I thought it was a really good way to sum it up. So, she said the video is going back around again. It was taken in the spring of 2019. It was then in June of 2019 that Extreme Animal Rights Group, ARM, Animal Recovery Mission, actually released the video publicly and to the farm owner. So, see that timeline. And then she said, to be honest, if you cared about these animals, wouldn't you have said something or published something sooner? Or here's an idea, stop them from doing it while you're recording this video. Exactly. Like, why would they be sitting there recording? So they must really enjoy that animal abuse if they can sit there and record it. Because I, if I saw that happening, I would literally scream so my head off. So it doesn't happen. Yeah. Like, they could have, yeah. What farmer would, or anybody would sit there who and would, be like, if Someone who actually oh, cares yeah. about animals that's, like, de de devoting their entire life and their career to stopping animal abuse, you would never sit there and film it. We wrote it tonight. Nice. <laughs> but, um, yes, I agree. That's just really messed up. So there you know something sketchy going on. Yeah. Like she said, they didn't publish it till months after. So they had it with them. So they, it could have been going on longer. They could have stopped it. But no, they don't care about animals. So here's another point. Fair Oaks has all their employees go through an animal welfare training and sign an animal welfare contract. Employees in the videos all had undergone this training. By the time this video was released, three-fourths of the employees who have been featured in this terrible footage actually had already been fired for suspected animal abuse, and the other was fired that day. All employees seen have actually already been prosecuted. Fair Oaks has a see something, say something policy that encourages fellow employees to, mis to inform their managers when they see bad things. This is why those featured were already fired by the time this video was released. So, things were taken care of. This is not still going on. Please read the date of the video before you think it's still also, happening. Also, I think that it's just kind of ironic how everyone already knew about Fair Farm because of Fairlife, like, way before it all happened. So they were, like, the most popular 
dairy brand that had a farm attached to the name. Because if you buy like milk in the store, you don't really know where it comes from. But Fairlife, you know, like they have a name attached to it. They have Fairlife Farm. So it's just kind of ironic to me that they would seek out this particular farm to, yeah. to explode. I don't know. Yeah, that's all I had to talk about today. I just uh, check out our merch. We got some new keychains. I don't know if we talked about that last week. Probably did. Cowtag keychains. They're really cool. They're really like, they're real. I love saying that. They're real cow tags and they're like really soft and floppy. And you can get your letter on them of your name or initial. You can get it as a gift. It's sort of the cutest gift ever. I would totally love that. Yeah. And it's got our little logo on it and it's yeah, it's just a good time. I saved two fawns yesterday. I was really, was cute. really proud. I literally like chased them out of the hay three times and I kept them running back in. I'm like, okay, I'm going to put you in the hedgerow. You're like, my mom said to be here. <laughs> It is crazy because they're just like chilling by themselves, so. Oh my god, I should have parked in a different driveway, but I'm helping my dad right now. We're going to plant some squash and gourds, and it's really easy to plant pumpkin, squash, and other things with two people because there's a lot of variety in what we plant, so it's easier to have two people so I don't have to keep on getting in and out of the tractor. I can just stay in the field and... Well, the planner. My breath. If you can't tell. Butterfly. Celebration is a bush, I believe. Got a few squash varieties here and filling up the hoppers. Let's stay away from all the wheels because that would be dangerous. Thank you all for watching. We are going to start chopping tomorrow. Oh. So it has more time to try out.